everyone, my name's Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara's Never Seen. And today, again, I'm keeping the good cage times rolling with Mandy. I don't know what it's about. I have no idea what this story is. I've just seen the cover where Nicolas Cage is covered in blood and that's enough for me. I'm sold, I'm there, signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours, Nicolas Cage. So let's get into Mandy. Very excited to see what this is all about. Let's do it, yes. I was expecting um, I guess that I think I was expecting exactly that I didn't know what the story was about so going into like a cool like culty thing very like mid summary but way way more but also very slow very artsy very stylized in a very trippy way very 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 uh, this movie was such a combination of Hellraiser with the Cenobites and Mad Max with just this post-apocalyptic feel and uh, crazy like car chases and very gritty and like leather jacket and then also very like Evil Dead with like this slapstick blood covered cage and chainsaws. Also, I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me that I know all of those references. <laughs> There's a lot of scenes with him just hanging out up front and it kind of just feels very slow. And I wrote down like, we got 40 minutes into the film, it's a two hour movie and I was like, I think now it's starting. And I love the payoff with that. I think at the end I appreciated it and it made sense to me, but during the film I was like, I'm just ready for that Nicolas Cage goodness and I'm ready for this to lead me somewhere. So we have this amazing couple in Nicolas Cage and unknown actress, I could look it up, but I'm the worst. And then we have this cult, and we first see them in an RV, and they're driving on the road, and she's walking on the road. And the cult leader sees her, is very into her sexually, his name is Jeremiah. And I think the most interesting thing about this is that I was watching a video, and they were saying that Nicolas Cage was initially offered the role of the cult leader, and he read the script, and he was like, I'm not gonna do that, but I do wanna play the lead. Man, oh man, he would have been an incredible cult leader. He was born to play the role that he played in this film. He was born to play it, but in an alternate universe, I would have still loved to see him play that. Maybe they just make it again and he plays every single role. That would be something that I would be very interested in. He's great. I want to watch him play everything. So a couple of the members of the cult go out to find Mandy and they summon these demon-like, I think, I think they're just humans who are on a lot of LSD, but they've got like knives in them and like one of them has like a knife for a penis. That sucks. It's very Cenobites from Hellraiser. It's very like pain and pleasure kind of thing from Hellraiser. This had to have been, especially these characters, had to have been inspired by Hellraiser. And I love that because I think they're so much better used here than they are in Hellraiser. I spent one grueling day two, three years ago watching every single Hellraiser film in one single day. It was truly awful. And so I know what I'm talking about with Hellraiser, guys. I experienced it all in one day and then never revisited it again. Revisited it again. So the Cenobite characters, they come and they go and kidnap her and him. He's tied up pretty much just in a crown of thorns. It's barbed wire and then around his arms as well. And then they take her in and they initiate her into this cult and that is so creepy and well done. They bring like the females of the cult group and, and have them initiate her in, which consists of slapping her around, telling her that if she's a good girl, her husband will live, uh, but she has to obey them. And then they put a drop of something in one of her eyes. What is this magic liquid that we're putting in her eye? One singular eye. And then there's this really cool prop that they have. It's like this giant wasp. I don't know what it is. It's like this big and it, it has a wasp little stinger and they sting her in her neck with the wasp. They bring her into Jeremiah who is just like raring to go. Then we see Jeremiah's very average penis and then she starts laughing and he gets livid. And then a lot of the people in the cult start looking at him like, this has never happened before. 
No one's ever laughed at you or questioned you before. Then they bring her out in a bag, tie her up, and then light her on fire, and she's burned alive to death. And it's horrifying. This scene is so, like, under your skin horrifying. They then leave him and then just drive off. And he's clearly still alive, which I feel like is a huge misstep. Why would you leave this alive man when you just killed his wife in the worst way uh, in front of him? You're gonna leave Nicolas Cage alive when you've just done him so dirty? You're gonna do that, really? Interesting, that's very interesting, hmm. So he gets himself free and he crawls to the charred remains of the love of his life. And it is quite a slow and grueling sequence of events. And he sees her little numbered shirt that, that, that she was wearing, and then he's watching this commercial for Goblin Mac and Cheese, and he's like, Goblin Mac and Cheese. So like, it clearly hasn't hit him yet, what has happened. He was crying when he was screaming out when she was being burned, but he hasn't like really broken down yet. Which you know is coming, because it's Nicholas fucking cage. So he goes into the bathroom, he finds a bottle of vodka, he like douses his hands with it, like his very bloodied up, cut up hands, and then he starts drinking the entire bottle of vodka while screaming and like grunting and yelling and like throwing a fucking fit. And it's so interesting. I'm sure everyone feels this, but I feel like as an actor, I watch scenes like this and you kind of put yourself there and you're like, what? what would be my actual response? Because sometimes you watch scenes where actors are going through a very, uh, characters are going through a very intense situation and the actor is doing their best, but it just isn't what a real person would actually do. It looks good on camera and like it totally reads well for the scene, but like what would you actually do if you had just seen your wife be burned alive and then you had to escape barbed wire and then you had to watch like a, a stupid commercial about goblin mac and like what what would you do how would the, how would that culminate and like how would you react to that situation and i feel like that nicolas cage always gives such a true performance of what you would actually do. This is exactly what I would do. I would go into my bathroom, I would find that bottle of vodka, I would drink the entire thing, and I would just fucking throw a fit, you know? And it's so interesting to watch him. He's so freaking talented. I love you, Nicholas Cage. I love you. This is such a good Cage freak out. It's just, I, it was so powerful, and it made me so uncomfortable in such a good and appropriate way. And I just, I, this is the best scene of the film, I think. Um, there's some really cool action sequences that I really enjoyed and absolutely loved, but like this was just the moment where he's just, he's just such a good actor. And it's so fun to watch good acting. It's like one of my favorite joys in life is watching good acting. And Nicolas Cage is so good. He's such a wild weirdo. And I, Love it. He goes to an old friend who we haven't heard about or seen, but you already get the idea that like they were friends and like he picks up this crossbow called the Reaper and then he tells his friend about what happened and, and breaks down kind of again, it's really good. And the friend is like, oh, I know who you're talking about. They're this really weird religious cult and they took like a bad case of LSD and then like they've never been right since then in the head and you're probably gonna die. He gets captured again after shooting one of the Cenobites in the stomach, I'm pretty sure. And he's all tied up and his hand is nailed down to a floor. So again, a lot more Jesus imagery. And then he pummels the Cenobite that had captured him. He rips the nail out of the ground. Gruesome. He then sees another Cenobite who has a knife for a penis, kills that guy. That's how we get the poster cage where there's blood all over him. Then he decapitates another Cenobite after like a very epic fight. And he lights a cigarette off of the flaming decapitated head, which I love. I love when Jeremiah is about to be killed. Nicolas Cage just crushes his skull in and it's amazing. But then yeah, the film ends and he just drives off and, and and then he sees his wife, he sees Mandy there, and, and, and it's just like, it's just a very 
vague ending and it's perfect and he makes the cage face and he's covered in blood it's just it's great it's so good i loved it i thought it was so good it was very 80s artsy like i said mad max hellraiser and evil dead i loved it i would love to continue watching horror films with nicholas cage of them he's been in like a hundred 20,000 movies, so let me know if you know of any good horror films. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next week. Bye! Oh, I'm Nicolas Cage, and this is my broomstick. <laughs>